as it approached its target. But a major problem with this method is that the fuel needed for these thrusters takes up valuable space and weight, which could be used to house additional science instruments. More recently, NASA has been using an aero assist technique called aero braking, which adds the use of atmospheric drag to slow the craft rather than using thrusters alone. This technique allows additional science instruments to be delivered to a distant target while also reducing costs. I spoke to Dr. Mary Kay Lockwood at NASA Langley Research Center to find out more. Well, when we first approach a planet on a trajectory from Earth, we do a small firing of the thrusters and capture into a very large elliptical orbit about that planet. We then do uh, several passes through the upper atmosphere of that destination to slow the spacecraft down into the final science orbit. Aerobraking is accomplished when a vehicle makes multiple passes around a planet or moon and uses the atmosphere to slow down the vehicle. This process is very slow, sometimes taking several months because the vehicle is only exposed to the upper layers of the atmosphere. This procedure is very similar to how a rock reacts when it is skimmed across the top of water. With each skip, the rock slows down until it finally stops. The spacecraft is similar because with each pass through the atmosphere, it slows down more and more until it finally reaches the appropriate orbital speed. Has the aerobraking technique ever been flown on a mission? Well, aerobraking was first demonstrated in the Magellan mission at the very end of the mission at Venus. And it has since flown in two successful Mars missions, both the Mars Global Surveyor mission and Mars Odyssey. It's also going to be used in the future on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter mission. Once a vehicle nears its destination, how does the atmosphere slow it down? Well, an atmosphere slows a vehicle down in the same way that uh, if you were to put your hand out the window of a car while it's moving, you can feel the force of the air on your hand. And that is the same force that's slowing the spacecraft down when it passes through the atmosphere. Aerobraking is a good way to slow a vehicle down at a destination and capture into an orbit, but we're also looking at another approach called aero capture. Aero capture is similar to aerobraking because it uses the atmosphere to slow a vehicle down. But unlike aerobraking, which only skims the top layers of the atmosphere, the aero capture technique allows the vehicle to go deep inside the atmosphere of the target. The vehicle maneuvers through the atmosphere using drag to decelerate to the desired orbital speed. After the vehicle exits the atmosphere, a very small thruster firing occurs to achieve the desired orbit around the target planet or moon. One of the major differences between aerobraking and aero capture is that for aero capture we need an aero shell. And an aero shell is very much the same as the aeroshell used on the Mars Exploration Rover missions you may be familiar with. But for aero capture, of course, we're maneuvering through the atmosphere and then exiting the atmosphere and finally achieving an orbit at a destination, where with the Mars Exploration Rovers, we were landing on the surface of that destination. For aero braking, you do not need an aeroshell because you're passing through the very upper part of the atmosphere, so the heating environment on the vehicle is not nearly as severe as it is with aero capture. So do different planets need different shaped aero shells or will one design work in all situations? The aero shell shape for the aero capture missions at places like the Earth or at Mars or at Titan um, can be very similar to those that are used with the Mars Exploration Rover missions. But if we're going to destinations such as Neptune, that would require a different vehicle shape different aeroshell shape, and that would be more shaped like a bullet that flies at an angle. To achieve a successful aero capture, we have to stay within a very um, narrow corridor. Um, if we don't stay within that corridor, we would have a flyby. We wouldn't capture into the orbit. Um, or on the other side, we would land. And so it's very important to stay within a particular corridor uh, through that destination. At Neptune, the corridor is narrower kind of like a little highway? It's kind of like way. a little highway. And so um, at Neptune, in order to make the highway bigger, um, we need to have a different shape. So Dr. Lockwood, in addition to aeroshells, what are some other techniques that can be used to slow a vehicle down? Well, we're looking at other techniques that might be second generation techniques uh, that would use an inflatable aeroshell or even a balut. A balut basically looks like a giant donut. It's got tethers similar to a parachute. Um, but it has a giant ring behind it. And 
that allows the spacecraft to fly shallower in the atmosphere to still slow down. We are always working to achieve the science and exploration goals for NASA and being able to reduce the cost of these systems and being able to improve the performance of the systems is a very important part of achieving that goal. And it's very exciting and challenging work. Coming up, we'll find out how specialized materials are saving lives. But first, did you know that aerobraking was first tested on the Magellan mission to Venus in 1994? Although the Magellan mission used propulsion to slow the craft, aerobraking was tested at the end of the mission to validate the theory. With the success of this test, NASA researchers decided to use aerobraking as the primary deceleration method on one of its next missions, the Mars Global Surveyor. On February 4, 1999, history was made when the Mars Global Surveyor successfully obtained stable circular orbit of Mars using aerobraking as the primary method of deceleration. Researchers at NASA have a long and significant history of materials technology development. With an impressive list of new lubricants, lightweight alloys, and composites, these materials have revolutionized our world. Since the 1960s, the process of creating new materials has rapidly advanced. Today, NASA scientists are continuing to develop